All right, you Mojo 2 TV report. We're here with Tiki Maven, uh, you know, the, the phenomenal Troy High uh, legend down here. Um, before I get started, man, there's a few uh, old timers that I uh, often conversate about. And when you were playing, yeah. they, they said that you were one of the best guards I've ever seen. These guys that played back in the 60s. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so uh, I forget his name. I think his name is Herb, but I, I, you can probably re reflect my mind on this, uh, this young fellow. He played for Skyler back in the day. But, um, you know, talk to me about, you know, your playing days here at Troy High, man, and, um, you know, and how, how it was for you. Oh, for, for me, it was weird because I, I started playing varsity in eighth grade. Um, my seventh grade, I came to try out for freshman. I made it, but my grades was bad, so I couldn't play. And then eighth grade, I tried out for JV. And they moved me up for a workout, and I never went back down. So, like, it was supposed to be a process. Like, I wasn't supposed to play that much. And we had, like, our my, my older cousin was supposed to start guard that year. And he had grade problems all of a sudden and, and had to miss the first five games. So I started. I, I didn't even know I was going to start until the first night. Like, our first game in Colony in the tournament, the coaches came to me. He like, yo, I'm going to give you the ball, and we're just going to go with what we got. But I always played with the my teammates because I always played up like in the summer leagues out here in this in this in Troy and all that. So like it was regular playing, but going back and forth off the bench it was a different challenge for me at that time. So that's kind of humbled me, I guess. But um, after that, it was, I mean. It was what it was from there, yeah. Like now, talk to me about you know what? When did you figure out at a young age when you really thought you had it? When, when you know, when when did you really know? I probably say, um, like I always had the utmost confidence in myself, like, but it it was never really like scoring or nothing like that. It was like I could control the game, I control the ball. Ain't nobody gonna steal the ball from me. I ain't gonna have like too many turnovers. That's necessarily my fault. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, one of your teammates might drop the ball. I know they open, they won't even be looking for the ball or something like, so it, it, like I had to make minor adjustments, but I probably say it was AAU ball that really made me feel. Like, what grade was that? What age was that? It was 14. 14. Um, 14 when I got moved up to the 17s, I was playing with McCreef and, and dudes like that. And I like, wasn't nobody stealing the ball from me. I was like getting my assist, scoring on the break. You know what I mean? Like. My shot wasn't all of that in high school to me. Like it was, it was kind of broke. Momentum wise, I, I hit a lot of shots of momentum and just competitive nature. Like I made plays, but I don't like I would. I, I never felt like nobody was better than me. I ain't gonna lie. So at 14, you felt that you had it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, um, talk to me about your travels. We know that you had some setbacks and things of that nature. So talk to me about what advice you would give young players through the process that you went through and experienced. I mean, respectfully, I, I would say just be humble and stay in the gym. Like, um, I, like, I was in the streets, you know what I mean? So, like, you stay in the gym, you ain't really got too much to worry about, you know what I mean? So I would say stay in the gym, stay in the classroom, stay with some tutors. The same way dudes work out, got extra people to work them out, they should get tutors and all of that. Like, get get your grades to the highest they can be. So when you get to the next level, that ain't something that's going to set you back. You know what okay, I mean? we're, I'm sorry. Now nah, you good. Real quick, because we're going to get started back here. Tell me what was the turning point? What was the green light that came on for you? Because you're doing a lot of things now. You have your son coming up. You're helping out a lot of young kids. Tell me what was the turning point for you? Um, I mean, it was just really trying to find myself. After I got in trouble, like, I, it, it was it was kind of dark. Like, I hit the streets hard, lost a lot of friends in the streets, and just trying to find myself. I really found myself through the kids and giving back, like, the game. I always loved the game. And... In reality, I guess I cheated the game by playing the streets. You can't do both. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just dedicated myself to the kids, trying to help some kids get to the next level and get out of the environments that, that I got caught up in. That's, that's really what it is. Well, thank you for your time. You're doing a fabulous job today giving back to your community, and you're a beacon of hope for kids to look forward to. We thank you. <laughs>